and we have most of our team located in Central Europe and like West Coast too. Central Europe is like nine hours time difference, which is tough, but like East Coast, Atlanta area, it's just six hours. So that is much, much easier to work with the European team. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. West Coast is tough. I lived on the West Coast most of my life and then I moved into Central and now I understand the rest of the world better. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Nadine. Hello. Hi, good to see you again. Love the surprise entrance from Nadine, the best. <laughs> Yes. So I think we're live streaming into the other platforms here now too. So that's good. So if you guys are watching on those platforms, we'll check some of the chat there later. Uh, but most of you guys should have an email or a text to uh, join the Zoom um, as well too. And then all of you guys in the Zoom here can have it. But uh, uh, Max and Nadine are the really co-founders of, of BidX. Uh, I know Max is going to be uh, running the show here today. And uh, I'm excited for this. This is, you know, it's interesting because PPC has always been uh, important on Amazon. But in the last couple of years, things have just changed so much that um, there's a certain level that when it comes to Amazon advertising, um, whether it's PPC or some of these kind of more advanced things like DSP or the Amazon marketing cloud, like these things are really evolving things that are really powerful that, um, you know, you want to make sure you know about the capability of it and maybe when you should use it, when you shouldn't, uh, and what it's about. These are things, certainly big brands are certainly all over and BidX is really a leader in the space. Uh, let these guys, uh, introduce themselves a bit more, but if you, and again, they're based out of Germany, even though Max and Nadine are in the U S a lot, there's a U.S. based team as well, but the, the product is like really, really good. So it's always mentioned amongst the uh, the top really software tools and automations that get out there. It's probably you know, it's probably the best tool on the market, and uh, but it's like just kind of powered by this uh, smart engineering uh, German technology out of uh, from uh, Max and Dean and company. So, but today we're gonna hand it over to Max. I think it kind of I think the topic is kind of beyond PPC. We talked about kind of the fundamentals of PPC today. Um, there'll be some tools you guys. Uh, at the end, if you guys are interested in trying to demo or that kind of stuff, you'll be able to do that as well. But mostly we want to provide you guys as much value. So Max, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to uh, jump on and share with the community here. Thank you for having us today. Uh, maybe Nadine, do you want to start to introduce yourself? Yeah, I can do that. Um, like my, I, I started my entrepreneurial journey um, back when I was still studying and I was working in a startup and um, that was where I kind of had the first introduction to uh, founding companies and um, building teams. And then during studies, I met Max and I was studying computer science and um, he was studying industrial engineering. So that's where we met and um, where we then teamed up. I'm handing it over to you. <laughs> yeah, uh, let me share my screen and then uh, I got some some uh, bullets to 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 share with that. So, hello everybody. Also from my side, thanks for the invite to be here today with you. We are very happy to be with you. So my name is Max Hoffman. I'm the second co-founder of Bidex and one of the managing directors. And I started selling on Amazon myself in 2015. It was a different time back then. It was like a lot less competition, a lot less organized and strict and everything. So it has evolved quite a lot. When we started to sell baby safety equipment at that time and realized that there was really a high demand for innovation in that category, especially US products that have not been available in Europe at that time. So we bulk ordered those in China and sold them all across Europe. And one thing that we realized was that launching new products required advertising and traffic to get them to the top as soon as possible. And also what we realized is once you had them at top, you need to keep pushing. Otherwise, the next entrant will come and surpass you. So advertising became like 
key for our success on Amazon. And at that time, it was a task that was done all manually. And since I do have my background in industrial engineering, focus on robotics and automation, we thought there must be an easier way. There must be a way to automate all of the manual tasks that we did at that time. As there was like software for Facebook or for Google, but there was none for Amazon. And the reason for that was that only in 2017, Amazon released the capabilities for an API that would also allow external software providers to write bit adjustments, to write the creation of new keywords. And it was exactly at that time where Nadine and I met at university. I got the background with my Amazon brand. Nadine got the background as she studied computer science. We teamed up and started to work on a software that soon should become FedEx. And now we are a team of over 40 people, mostly in Europe, but also with about five over here in the US and growing beyond Amazon PPC with the Amazon DSP and the Amazon Marketing Cloud. And it's not only Amazon anymore, but since earlier this year, we also expanded to the Walmart marketplace. So for today, uh, we have a couple of topics that we'd like to talk about. As mentioned, last week's session covered the basics of Amazon PPC and everything that you can do on Amazon. And that's really the fundamentals. So first of all, we always recommend to get these right before you think about how to drive external traffic. But then we need to discuss like, why is advertising beyond Amazon crucial? That's the first thing that we will talk about. What is the Amazon DSP and who can use it actually? Uh, how to leverage the insights from the Amazon Marketing Cloud AMC and how to get started with, with Amazon DSP. So let's just jump right into it. Why is advertising beyond Amazon crucial? And that is once you realize that you make use of Amazon sponsored product, use of Amazon sponsored brands, use of Amazon sponsored display ads, that all the possibilities that Amazon is providing you regarding the ads are kind of like wide nowadays, but also still limited because even though you get some external of Amazon display, it is quite limited in how much you can make control over there. So, as we've seen that cost per clicks are rising since there is like limited space and Amazon is a platform where the amount of sellers actually bid against each other. And as more sellers there are, as higher the bids are going. And so what we've seen, while it was super profitable back in the days to use Amazon sponsored ads, it might make sense for many of you who already maxed out the sponsored capabilities to look beyond what Amazon might be offering and how to send external traffic to Amazon since investing more in Amazon sponsored ads might not be as efficient, as profitable anymore. Earlier, this was not the case because external traffic was always like much more expensive. Nowadays, Amazon got so expensive on Amazon already that it might make sense already much earlier. And Amazon on display and sponsored ads on Amazon, they won't get any cheaper because the space that Amazon is having on its own site is kind of limited. And when you go nowadays to amazon.com, you realize that like, all of the listings you see, like above fold, are covered with a sponsored brand ad, with sponsored product ads, with recommendations, and with editorials. So until you see organic listing, you need actually to scroll already today. And Amazon is not really able to add many more sponsored listing to their site to increase like the av availability of inventory than just like. To, to get rid of all organic listings and just have like paid listings. So that is the restriction that Amazon is, is dealing with, where we as sellers need to find smart solutions to work around and to find other ways 
to receive exposure and to be better than than our peers. So that's where Amazon DSP is coming in. And that is why it is essential to not only make use of the space that is available on Amazon, but also across the whole internet beyond Amazon. So basically the question then is, what is the Amazon DSP and how can we use it? The Amazon DSP, DSP stands for Demand Side Platform. It is a technological platform that enables advertisers, in this case, Amazon sellers, to connect programmatically with websites and publishers that sell their inventory on the site for ads. So it allows you to purchase display ads as well as video ads of Amazon across the whole internet. It was also previously known as AAP. They changed the name a couple of years. And what makes the Amazon DSP really interesting compared to other DSPs as there are Google DV360 or as there is the Trade Desk, for instance, is the exclusive Amazon audience that you can target. So only Amazon has information about customers and what they actually bought. And that tells a lot of the customer. It's not just like, what are they searching for or what do they like? But it is, what did they end up buying? And that is like the most important USP that the Amazon DSP is offering. And that makes it also like much, much easier for Amazon sellers to make use of. And there are basically two options to access the Amazon DSP. The first thing is you can do Amazon managed service. It typically requires like a minimum spend of 35 grand a month. And so it's much rather for bigger advertisers that already allocate a certain budget to the Amazon DSP or other DSPs. And the second one is that Amazon allows like enterprise self-service access. And that is available for selected agencies as well as for larger companies. So they do have their own so-called seed and can get you the display and video advertisement that you want. And in addition, they don't require a minimum spend of 35,000, but much, much less than that. And so it allows you to also make use of Amazon's exclusive data, even if you are not selling on Amazon. So if you have like a car dealership uh, in your town that would like to make use of people who just got, for instance, a baby and are looking for a new car and or might soon get a baby and they don't know that they need a new car yet. So those companies could also make use of these Amazon data because Amazon knows they are buying like a whole new equipment for a, a new kit that is coming up whatsoever. And then you can already run ads for life changes that are going to happen. So it's not only for Amazon sellers themselves, but also for all companies, even if they are not selling on Amazon. And then where's your, where's your ad? Like where does it appear? On the one side, it also appears on Amazon, but you will cover other sections on the Amazon website like on the left-hand side as a skyscraper or like above the review section where you cannot get into with sponsored ads. It will also be present on all of Amazon-owned inventory, like the Internet Movie Database, IMDb, and then on publisher sites. So um, if readers from The Times or from Reddit are seeing ads, these ads might come through an advertiser that is making use of the Amazon DSP. And the DSP is also connected to other exchanges, which allows it to spread it even further. And then the traffic is sent to product detail pages, to brand stores, to dedicated landing pages. Or what you can also do is you can send that traffic to your own external landing page as long as you are not directly selling a product that is also available on Amazon at least two clicks away, kind of. So if you have a lead magnet that is sold with your product or that should attract your product, um, then you can send that traffic to that landing page. And if a customer needs to click at least twice to get to like your Shopify store, then it is uh, okay. Other than that, Amazon won't allow it because you should check out on Amazon 
customers should check out on Amazon. And whereas regarding the sales funnel, you've got like the sponsored brands and the sponsored displays and sponsored product ads um, for the different stages of awareness, consideration, purchase, and loyalty, you do have the same tools within the Amazon DSP. So for awareness and consideration, we got in-market and lifestyle segments, which we'll discuss a little bit in the upcoming slides. And for the lower part of the sales funnel, you've got the DSP remarketing possibilities, which are, in our opinion, the most efficient tools that Amazon DSP is offering. And it's the way that most of our customers are starting with the Amazon DSP because it provides like the quickest and highest return on their ad spend. And what is really nice with the Amazon DSP is that it provides you so much access to data that you otherwise would not be able to, to access just with Amazon sponsored ads. So you can have a look in how many potential buyers do you have that built, bought like products of yours or your competitors in the past, how much research brands or competitor brands, how much search in the category, how much did not engage with the category. And you can target all of them like differently and with different ads in the whole sales funnel. And regarding display uh, and video formats, so if you want to target uh, customers who should just get to know your brand and what you're doing, or if you're selling a product that is a little bit higher priced, where it leads a little bit more of uh, explanation, then mostly it makes sense to invest a little bit into the upper funnel with, for instance, a video ad that shows much better the USP that your product is offering to a wider audience and then link to, to Amazon or also again to your own website where you explain that. And then if you are in the middle of the funnel where you know, okay, uh, people are already going to consider my product, then maybe like a display ad, still a little bit more generic might make sense. That is for instance, um, redirected to your brand store uh, so you can have like a complete individual design, which is again, a huge benefit of the Amazon DSP compared to, for instance, a sponsored display ad, you can completely customize the look and the feel you have to have certain elements and certain elements are forbidden, but it makes much more sense, especially as your brand is growing to have a custom corporate identity that is also displayed with the ads and Last but not least, you've got like the lower part of the sales funnel where we talk about the purchase of products, which is most of the case resp responsive e-commerce ads. These ads are the easiest way to get started since they are being auto-generated by Amazon. And since the display ads appear like in all different sizes and, and formats, you would need to provide all the different assets like we decided to only use about six different sizes. However, again, you would need to come up with six different banner sizes for each single product that you would like to, to advertise. And with a responsive e-commerce ads, Amazon is generating these ads automatically for you and is making sure that your ad does always have the right format. It is a little bit similar to what you get with a sponsored display ad. So you also have like elements as the add to cart, as the style rating, as the prime logo and so on. So this helps since it is like, an, it is a, a view, a look of uh, uh, the elements that customers are familiar with. So that helps to build trust and it helps to increase the conversion rate. And when we talk about the targeting and the retargeting, then as mentioned, we've got six targeting types for in-market and lifestyle. In addition, we got contextual targeting, uh, demographics. We got location and time, so you can decide in which zip codes, for instance, or which hours of the day you'd like to be displayed. And you can also narrow down the technology that people are using. For instance, you can just target people that are using an iPhone and iOS, for instance. And regarding the retargeting options, it is that you are able to remarket Amazon users. You can advertise also based on your own audiences. So if you, for instance, might have your own Shop Shopify store or like 
any other data that you've collected with campaigns from Facebook and so on, you can make use of these audiences. And what we also can do is we can create lookalikes. So if you run remarketing campaigns based on an audience that purchased your products in the past or purchased competitive products in the past, we can build audiences that are very similar to, to that audience to then see like an updated version of a product that you're selling. So let's have a look a little bit more detailed into the in-market targeting. So this is based on historical shopping and browsing behavior, and it is uh, predefined by, by Amazon. And one product example would be over here that if a customer bought, for instance, gym products in the past, then the ad may appear when segments like health or spotness or fitness are selected. So these are all in-market segments. The next one is lifestyle targeting, and that is based on the user's face of life. Uh, we already mentioned, like, for instance, um, somebody is buying all the stuff for a, a baby, then it might make sense that this customer is soon getting a kit and it knows that um, those will be future parents, kind of, and we are able to target those. As well as if a family, for instance, already has kids, then based on the shopping behavior that they did over the past, you can say, is it like a one year to two year old? Is it rather like a three to four? Or is it like um, a teenager whatsoever? And so we can directly target all of these to get still a, a very precise audience that we are targeting, but it is beyond our like core audience that we target regularly just based on searches that we do have with Amazon sponsored ads. The next targeting option is the contextual. So over here, it is about the product targeting uh, categories and in which categories they are currently browsing. So this is also defaulted by Amazon and you can have the drop down of all the different categories so you can directly target a main category or also subcategory, sub subcategory, and then everybody who searched products in those categories will see your ads. And if you know that your product is mainly bought by males or by females um, in a certain age group, you can also make sure to only target those. And these are all targeting options that are quite advanced, but that enable you to improve your conversion rate and the efficiency of your ads by some some small percentage points. And if you're just spending some dollars a day, it won't make a, a huge difference. But if you spend more and more and more over time, even smaller minor adjustments will dramatically improve the performance of your ads. And you are just making sure that you don't waste any money. The next is that if you know, for instance, you are selling products for summertime or where it is hot, it might make sense to just run your ads in the southern states and limit the display of ads to, to places where it is like much, much warmer at the moment, for instance, than in, in other areas. And also if you sell, for instance, business supply, um, then... Most businesses don't work on the weekends. So whereas business supplies is probably purchased Monday through Friday, you might just turn off the ads during the weekend since conversion rates on these dates and these days will be much lower. And as mentioned before, you also can select the technology, for instance, um, cellular network, the uh, brand that is used, the size that is used and so on. Um, which makes it, again, a little bit easier to define who at the end is actually going to see your ad. And then, as mentioned, you've got also the retargeting options. And the retargeting options, in my opinion, are like the best way to start. And it's also the easiest way to start. So retargeting basically allows you to target Amazon customers who have visited your product detail pages or competitor detail pages but did not yet purchase any of those products. 
And in that case, you know, that all they are already like very low in the in the sales funnel. So much rather in the consideration or purchase stage where they are like about to make a purchase probably very soon. And so the idea over here is user who visited the product detail page of your, of your product but did not purchase, show them my ad and follow this audience across the whole internet. Follow the user who viewed your product and did not buy it across the whole internet until they buy it or until most of the customers would have bought a similar product. And most in most of the cases, this is depending on how much does the product actually cost. If a product is more expensive, usually it takes longer. If a product is cheaper, usually people don't think too much about it and purchase it much rather quickly. And as mentioned as well, you can use your own audiences that you've generated maybe with your Shopify store and upload those to the Amazon DSP and Amazon will try to find matching results and the matching Amazon customers. And then you are able to enhance the audiences that you have, or you can also, for instance, if you don't want that Amazon and your Shopify store, for instance, are interfering, you can say, okay, please exclude all of my own customers that I do serve. I don't want them to see my Amazon ad because I'd like much rather have them in my Shopify store where I already like paid a lot to acquire them in the first place and they should continue to purchase over there. So please have them excluded over here. And the nice thing about retargeting audiences is that you can also create lookalike audiences. So if you know that a certain customer purchased, for instance, products from a competitor in the past, you can not only use the audience future product that did not purchase or like purchase that product, but you can also create a new audience that says, okay, please target everybody that is very similar to these customers that bought that product. So to sum it up, uh, you got a, a bunch of advantages. Um, you reach a new audience that is based on exclusive real-time first-party data, which in our opinion is like the most powerful data source at the moment, much more valuable than from Facebook Meta or from, from Google. You can target not only on Amazon, but also like off Amazon across the whole internet, across devices, across apps. The pricing is based on CPM, which is cost per mail. So it's not a CPC model, cost per click model where you pay for each click, but you pay like for every thousand times that your ad is being displayed on, on the devices. And for brands, it, it relies on brand safeguards. So you won't show up on any porn sites whatsoever. So Amazon also makes sure that your your ad is a in a in a safe place um, and that there is no content that might be uh, bad. Uh, you can custom design all of your banners as well as the videos much more to your own need and to also separate yourself from from competitors. You gain a lot of insights into your audiences and into the buying behavior and into the performance. And you can have with like responsive e-commerce ads, you have the ability to automatically have the balance adjusted to all the different sizes. You can target across the whole sales funnel and as mentioned, target um, and send traffic to product detail pages, brand store, custom landing pages, or your own external website. And so, how much does it cost is often the question. What is the billing model? As mentioned, it's uh, billing for supply based on uh, cost per mill, cost on 1,000 impressions of the ad, and then agencies, when you are working with us or also when you're working with Amazon, they charge a management fee. In our case, it's 15% uh, or like 5% if you do it yourself, and a monthly retainer of... $295. We say it's a minimum commitment of three months. And we recommend $5,000 per month, which is like with three months, at least $15,000. Uh, 
that you should invest, which is like much less that Amazon is requiring you to, to invest already in a, in a single month. So in that case, it makes it much, much easier to start with. However, as mentioned before, before you start with Amazon DSP, make sure that you maxed out Amazon sponsored ads, that you maxed out sponsored brands as well as sponsored display ads. And a typical monthly ad spend that we see where it makes sense to also make use of Amazon DSP is around $15,000 per month for sponsored ads. So if you spend more than $15,000 per month on sponsored ads, then it makes sense to make use of the Amazon DSP. And to give you a glimpse how it uh, looks in the Amazon Marketing Cloud and what you can see over there, um, I have a little demo. But before that, we have a question from Rhonda. Yep. What is the typical ratio a small brand would spend on DSP Amazon versus DSP of Amazon? So when talking about on Amazon sponsored ads and off Amazon, Amazon DSP, we see that brands invest 20% in addition for on Amazon presence, uh, for, for off Amazon presence. So if you recently spend about $20,000 a month, then you invest like 5,000 in addition for the Amazon DSP, and like 20 to 25% in addition for Amazon traffic off Amazon. And this is the amount that we can invest for sure with the same efficiency. Amazon DSP off Amazon is kind of unlimited. So you can reach like 300 million customers kind of in uh -huh. uh, North America and in the US um, if you get the budget. But if you do it like that, your efficiency would like drop and your rows probably would be terrible. Um, but you, you you would have the possibility. So we say uh, invest additional 20 to 25% of the current ad budget that you are spending monthly and you will like create incremental sales with the same efficiency. If you spend more, mostly efficiency goes a little bit down, but you also reach like many more people. So it makes sense if you launch new products to invest more where you know, okay, in the beginning, I need to educate a little bit um, about my new product. And then uh, later on, those will also convert. But I know that this is an investment into the future and the like imminent return won't be as good as it is if I just run remarketing ads. Cool. Yeah. And Max, one other question too on the, uh, you know, you're talking about the lookalike audiences, which is cool. A lot of people, if they've done Facebook ads and familiar with kind of the power of that, um, how effective is, are those audiences, is that one of the better approaches, like lookalikes to people that bought yeah. previously or, yeah. So our typical recommendation is start with remarketing of your own products then extend to remarketing of competitor products, then extend to lookalikes, and only then make use like of the other marketing, like in market and lifestyle, because like these three will provide like the most precise targeting of your ads. And if you target like very precise, you will also receive a great return on that spend. Got it. Yep. Makes sense. Okay. Then uh, let's have a look how, how it actually looks like. Um, so over here, we see a, a back end of a European customer, in that case, a German customer of the BitX platform and how it looks like. So the first chart that you see, um, and this is like data from the Amazon Marketing Cloud. It is like a query-based system where we write the queries and then we visualize them in the front end for our customers. Don't get confused with the German and the Euro. Uh, I just make um, sure that I explain everything so you understand what you see. The first thing that you see is the customer journey. So this tells you how many touch points and how different, what different touch points did somebody have to actually make a purchase. And in that case, the way that the most of the, um, the, the revenue was generated was just seeing sponsored ads. But you see that already like the third most um, important way and journey that revenue was generated was like first touch point with an Amazon DSP ad and then a sponsored product ad and then they pull. And then after that, it's already that 
uh, just the Amazon DSP generated touch points and the customer bought, which is great, which is like what you want to see when we make use of the Amazon DSP to generate these incremental sales. The next thing that we can see is how much uh, are we actually generating in the different parts, how much uh, revenue are generating from ads that are being shown in the different stages of the sales funnel. So we just add an identifier to the campaigns. If it is like an awareness campaign, consideration campaign, purchase campaign, or loyalty campaign. And as you can see over here, like the purchase campaign is by far with like 800K, the, the biggest group. However, already also in the consideration phase, like almost 300K um, have been generated. And loyalty means um, I just make use of everybody that seen my product in the past and purchased my product in the past. And now I cross sell those um, different products of my brand, um, still made like um, about 100. So also a very efficient way to generate incremental sales with cross marketing. You can also see like how often was it the case that just DSP was um, the way to go, just sponsored ads was the way to go, um, how many touch points they've, they've needed. And you see also um, how many, um, what, what's like the conversion is of the different formats. So we got like um, DSP ads, we got sponsored products, sponsored brands, streaming video ads that we do have also with uh, sponsored display video ads nowadays, uh, sponsored display, sponsored brand video. So you get like an overview of all the different performances and how they perform ROAS wise and so on. You see an, a heat map based on the different days of the week. The week in Germany starts on a Monday and then we have like the weekend on Saturday and Sunday, which kind of makes sense instead of uh, starting on Sunday kind of and still call it weekend, uh, we see like a heat map of the different states in Germany in that case, and how much revenue in all the different regions would have been generated. Also, this is then available for the US and the different states, so you can target that. And you also see like, how long does it take until buyers make uh, a purchase? And we see like 30% uh, of customers buy your product after one hour after they've seen the ad. Um, after 25, uh, 24 hours, it's about 45%. And after seven days, it's about 75%. And that tells you a lot, like, probably you should stop your remarketing campaigns after the eighth day. And uh, that is like broken down into also the different display types for mobile, desktop, or tablet. You can also see like how many customers did you get that were like brand new to brand customers, how many recurring customers do you have? How many orders did they do in the past with you? Uh, how often did they not complete the purchase? They just added the item to the cart, but then did not check out. So you can also target those. Or how often was it added to their wish list? You can also target those. Um, how many touch points does it need before they purchase? And you see like a typical um we do get about 75 percent of all purchases with like three touch points or less so in that case it's probably a, a cheaper product that is sold over here where it just needs like three touch points and then um three out of four customers are going to purchase and you also see an overview of uh which device are they using at the moment to check out in that case it is um desktop and tablet mainly typical we see that is like 50 to 60% actually on a mobile device, um, the checkout and desktop and tablet is the other half. But this is just an overview of how Amazon Marketing Cloud looks like and all of the data that you can leverage to then understand your ads, not only your Amazon DSP ads, but also your Amazon sponsored ads, and just to make use of the most of your advertising budget and spend it as efficient as possible. And then the question would be like how to get started with Amazon DSP. It's uh, pretty straightforward. So um, if you want to start, reach out to, to reach out to us. Uh, we'll create a media plan with a structure that tells you like step by step 
how we would uh, plan and run the campaign. Uh, we sign an agreement. Um, you receive then access to your own customizable dashboard with access to the Amazon Marketing Cloud. We do have regular um, campaign report calls, and we also take care of the whole optimization. And for everybody today here with AMC Insiders, we also have a special offer. So the first three months, uh, buy two, get one free. Just make use of the promo code AMC Insiders. And we have a QR code over here on the right hand side. So you are able to schedule a call with Jamie and he will guide you again personally through all the capabilities that you do have with the Amazon DSP. If it makes sense for you, what makes sense for you and just to help you to, to further grow your presence on Amazon. And yeah, that's, that's basically it. And uh, if there are any questions or need any more information about it, then we are happy to answer those now and yep. also later via email. Cool. And maybe uh, if you can put back up the QR code again too, and I don't know if we can grab, I guess from the URL, if we could grab the URL. Let me see here. You don't have the URL right there too. Should we, I can uh, I can probably grab it via the phone and send it. We'll put it in the chat there too for anyone. Um, let me see here quickly. Um, cool. That's good. But obviously, you, you guys, so the, you know, DSP is definitely something for some people. It will be further down the road because there's a certain amount of budget you need to spend. But it is something you definitely want to know about uh, the capability, right? Sometimes you guys will hear it and you you won't know what you know what it's all about or how it works. Um, it's definitely something that is, um, you know, this type of marketing has become more and more powerful. So it's cool. I'm going to actually put it in the chat here real quick here too. Hold on a second here. There we go. Um, yeah, that works. The chat. There we go. Yep. Yep. Oh, Joey already did it. Awesome. Yeah, Joey beat me oh, to it. Work. I was trying to click through to find it. But um, yeah, obviously, so in, in BidX, I guess they use, of course, this was on DSP, which is like, you know, some of the most advanced stuff. There's obviously the PPC side, um, which we didn't necessarily cover around there this week. Last week, we covered the fundamentals, but the, the BidX side has a ton of automations and and how much would you say in ad spend you guys run for P, PPC, um, like ballpark? About 300 million. Yeah, so three hundred million dollars uh, plus of uh, or euros <laughs> of uh, of ad spend, right? So you guys can see they're they're managing a lot on this stuff in terms of PPC and DSP. DSP is still, I'll say, newer. It's evolving still, but it's pretty yeah. cool to see all the retargeting. We talk about driving outside traffic, how important that is for listings, how much Amazon wants that. But you know, Amazon realizes, right? They again, they want. They want to be very competitive in this space. They also want to leverage, as uh, Max talked about, some of their other entities besides just Amazon.com. But you know, they whether it's some of their media channels or Amazon Prime or Whole Foods, like they've got other properties that they want to leverage in the marketplace, not just for Amazon sellers, but as uh, Max was talking about, really for anyone uh, looking to uh, to market uh, services or products. So that's cool. Um, yeah, Judy's put the website up there again. And yeah, if you guys book call, we will connect and uh, with like an account manager, et cetera. Obviously, you want to have a certain level of ad spend. If you're earlier in the stage, you're not quite there yet. Um, we'll keep working with you uh, with the team here to help you guys get to that that next step. But the uh, the BidX tool is, again, I mentioned is really an industry leader because of the because of the automations behind it and the capability that it has well too. But feel free to ask any other questions while we're here still, whether it's on DSP or if there's something on the PPC side, feel free to. I think one of your big takeaways is that it does not make sense that the U.S. calls a weekend a weekend, but our weeks start on Sundays. 
You have a good point there. That's a good point. Yeah. Sunday should not be the start of the week here in the U.S. We have a lot of things like that, though, too, right? Like the, the boiling points, 212 degrees versus 100 versus yeah, freezing is 32. Uh, it's uh, freezing <laughs> at, what, 32? 32, so yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, pretty straightforward, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Much easier than to have decreased Celsius where it's like zero, it's yeah. freezing, and the 100, it's boiling, so. Sure. Or like a mile is 5,200 feet, something like that. Yeah. So, right. It's easy conversion, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, and all, all kidding aside, guys, hope you guys got some uh, some good value out of this stuff. I know like this is, um, you know, I'll call it advanced stuff. I never like to say advanced because at the end of the day, everything's a tool that at some point, um, it sometimes has to do with what your ad spend level is or where you're at with your brand. Not that it's, advanced or not advanced, but it's important that you all know the realms of possibilities and kind of where you're at potential. Um, and uh, again, it's evolving a lot because, I mean, Max, you made the point that Amazon just kind of opened the API for advertising, I guess, essentially what it was like you said, what, in 2017, something like that? Yeah. And uh, for instance, for Amazon DSP, they just announced basic capabilities beginning of this year. So Amazon ESP yeah. is still as new, kind of, as it was like Amazon sponsored ads in 2017. And everyone who was using Amazon sponsored ads in 2017 was winning. So you need to adapt to new capabilities and new product features as quickly as possible to stay ahead of everybody else. Because like later in the game, everybody will use it. And if you make use of it now, you will be ahead of everybody else. Yeah, so definitely cutting edge uh, stuff. So it's uh, super cool. Well, Max, really appreciate the time here today. Um, Deborah says, thanks for an excellent eye-opening presentation. Awesome. Great feedback, Deborah. And again, any other final questions or any thoughts, uh, feel free to put in the chat. And I know, um, again, Max put the BidX link there. And I think Joey put the link if you guys, you know, if you're looking for a demo of the uh, – of the offering in bid X. And I know there's a special offer uh, as well too. kind of the aims. We'll capture that anyways, just for uh, just cause that, that little calendar goes directly to uh, to a calendar for me. So awesome. Max, any, any final thoughts, Max, before we wrap it up here? I think it was a great session. Thank you for having us and uh, see you. See you soon. Awesome. Cool. Well, again, for you guys, all of the active AMZ, insider members the recording will go into uh the school platform into your pro academy so you guys can refer back to this uh as well too and uh, hit us up with any questions so angela says thank you max chris and melissa thank you pinky thank you awesome all right thanks everyone thank you max thank you all right see you bye bye